How's it going my WBE people, Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor back with the weekly recap for the Shield Division in week 13 and unfortunately for the first part of this I'm not going to be joined with my co-host Jacob as always but he will be taking over for the final three games that he will be covering uh, in this weekly recap. Uh, again it's just uh, we're re genuinely really really sorry it's so difficult for us to schedule because of our different time zones, uh, our different lives that we live, it's incredibly difficult. Um, that's just how it goes sometimes but regardless we have five very exciting games to cover uh in this weekly recap the reason that we're only covering five rather than seven is that at the time that both of us are recording at well at the time that both of us agreed what we were recording etc uh only six games had been posted um one was missing and the uh one of the six games was more of a meme game between kelly and leo where they were both in call they both built meme sets and they weren't taking it too seriously um so i felt like it probably wasn't really worth us analyzing that game um from a competitive standpoint as there wasn't really a lot to analyze it wasn't a competitive game however it was very very entertaining so if you're curious to see what that game was like go over and watch it i watched it i laughed all the way through so uh definitely worth recommending on that front but yeah not really worth trying to analyze and recap as such um as it didn't really affect playoffs or anything else either so all that being said, uh, the first game that I have to cover is the Chicago Cub Chews taking on the Miami Dom fans as Galactic Elliot took on Kyle A. And uh, Elliot was in an interesting position going into this game where he knew if he won, he would guarantee himself a place in playoffs. Uh, but if he lost, then it wasn't guaranteed. Other results could go wrong and things could happen, but he still had a good chance. So he kind of went into it thinking, I want to win, but if I don't get one, it's not the end of the world. Uh, he's good friends with Kyle and, and they just wanted to have some fun. And this was definitely a very, very entertaining match. Trading very early as Diancy got its rocks up, Mega Garchomp got its rocks up, and then Mega Garchomp was able to take out the Diancy whilst losing a lot of chip. Mega Pidgeot was able to come in to revenge the Mega Garchomp and so on and so forth. So early game, it was just really trading. Trading hazards, trading mons, uh, very aggressive from, from the early game. Um, and then it started to heat up a little bit. As Carl Hooper came in, was able to revenge kill the Pidgeot. Uh, as Kyle perhaps either not thinking of the Scarf or not wanting to risk switching anything in on a potential Dark Pulse or whatever. If uh, if Elliot went for a prediction, just picking up with the Thunderbolt. And in general, it was just really, really nice bring. I think Scarf Hooper in this matchup had a great time. It would have been difficult. Uh, Kingdra was Scarf here, so Kingdra Swift Swim in the rain with the Scarf might have been a real, real problem. Uh, there's not a lot of speed control that Elliot had for that with things like Scolipede. But unfortunately, the Kingdra was brought in on a knockoff from the Serena, uh, which then into power it was able to knock out the Kingdra. So Kingdra wasn't able to do anything in this game um, and in general that just made Hooper use such a great bring. Hooper Unbound is a terrifyingly strong mon, it has a good move pool, it's actually got decent special bulk as Elliot pointed out in his video and yeah picked up three kills here deservingly. I thought that Kyle maybe could have played a little bit more aggressively, he brought in the Cresselia to revenge kill the Scarf Hooper, it had shown that it was obviously Scarf um, and he knew that I don't think Elliot was ever going to stay in uh, when he was locked into Thunderbolt, but he still went for the signal beam where I felt like maybe he could have tried to go for a psychic or something a little bit stronger, catching something, switching in, uh, and get a bit more momentum that way, perhaps. Uh, but I don't know, M maybe not. I don't know if Cresselia really is ever a mon that applies that much offensive momentum. However, having said that, the Pelipper set to the, that came to this game shows that you can't take things for granted with Kyle A's building. He brought a Tailwind Life Orb Pelipper with Hidden Power Steel to bop the Alolan Ninetales. Uh, really, really entertaining set and pretty effective actually just picking up the KO there on Ninetales and putting some offensive pressure on Elliot's team. It looked like he would have to sack a couple of monsters if it had the Hurricane, but it didn't seem to. Uh, either way, it was just a very entertaining bring, if nothing else, pretty heat from Kyle, uh, as was the Flame Charge Rockinium Z Volcanion, which I thought actually was the best bring of this whole game. On either side, I thought Scarf Hooper was very effective, but I thought uh, Volcanium with Flame Charge into uh, Rockinium Z was a little bit of a masterstroke from Kyle, being able to take out its main check in that Mantine. Had it not been a Scarf Hooper U to revenge kill it, um, I think Volcanion could really have gone in, and that was a really creative way of being able to beat something like Mantine that thinks it can pretty much always wall Volcanion very easily so yeah definitely really really impressed with that bring I thought that was fantastic prep uh, and it worked perfectly too so in general good game played by both sides very offensive very entertaining uh, the Chicago Cup Chews do emerge the 2-0 victors which I believe locks them in for playoffs so uh, well played by Elliot after a great season and definitely very deserving of that I feel Moving on to the second game that I have to cover here, we have the Sin City Scissors taking on the Adelaide Honchcrows and Patty Trills taking on Bill Standish. Now, 
Since Bill has come into the league, uh, he's brought some heat, he's brought some entertaining sets, he's made some very entertaining videos, uh, but he's perhaps struggled a little bit for results, and that was the case again here with Patty emerging the 3-0 victor. Uh, I've said this, I think, in every video I've recorded recently, but Patty has 100% been the surprise package of the season for me. I, I just didn't expect him to do so well going into it, I didn't know anything about the guy. Uh, as my understanding was he was relatively inexperienced, but yeah, he's done fantastically. He's picked up very, very quickly and really, really impressive. Uh, it helps that his draft also is terrifying. But with creative prep, like the flame charge Incineroar that he brought to this game, you're always going to do well. And I, I think he really has been quite creative with some of his brings this season. Uh, since Incineroar picked up two KOs, as did Mega Alakazam. And Mega Alakazam, I thought, was a bit of a problem for Bill's team. Uh, he brought a Pursuit Scissor to trap it, but then he kind of... Gave some chip on the Necrozma, gave some, sacked I think the Articuno, then went into Scissor to Pursuit Trap it. When I really felt like if Mega Scissor is at full HP, and you have a Mega Alakazam, you're going to run the Calcs, you're going to see Spadef Mega Scissor choose on a Hidden Power Fire, um, and you know that you're going to die to the U-turn and just give initiative. So I feel like uh, he had pretty good mons in the back, like Landris Therian, for example, um, that could always come in on Mega Scissor's U-turn. So from my perspective, I felt like Bill had to be a lot more aggressive with his Pursuit Trap, because he essentially gave uh, Patty a huge amount of chip on his Necrozma, uh, a huge amount of chip on his Mega Scissor, and his Primarina was whittled down as well, and it was just... There was just a lot going on where I felt like he just needs to be more aggressive, bluff that he was going to go for the U-turn and Pursuit Trap him early because whilst he wanted to chip the Megazam into range of the Pursuit, um, if he stayed in, I assume, if he switched out, the Pursuit was always going to KO. So yeah, there was just one of those moments where I felt like Bill needed to be a little bit more aggressive because he kind of switched around a lot and just surrendered a lot of uh, HP points on a lot of his mons during that trade-off there. But other than that, I thought Bill played relatively well. I thought he had a good game. His pre-marina that he's been running with Aquajet has been picking up KOs regularly throughout the season. You don't often see Aquajet pre-marina, and you don't often see it picking up kills, but it's been working. Uh, definitely, he's been impressing me with how he's used pre-marina. Made it look like a really, really great mon, better than I thought it would be, so definitely impressed with that. Uh, but, yeah, as I say, Patsy just, I think, had better prep. Um, I think probably wanted it a little bit more and was very deserving of his victory. Life of Raichu was another great bring by him. And his Landorus T never even hit the field. So, I mean, that shows that you're doing something right. Um, but... Uh, one thing that I would say is that Bill acknowledged this himself as he said, you know, I, I am disappointed of course to not make playoffs, but I recognise that Patty's been here all season, I came in as a replacement coach, and I have complete respect for him kind of earning his spot in playoffs where perhaps Bill felt like he hadn't as much, taking over a team with a good record um, and just kind of getting in that way so I thought Bill was really, really respectful and really, really understanding of that situation uh, but don't get me wrong, he still played his hardest and still played well, so very entertaining game and with all that guys, I am going to pass over to my co-host Jacob as always who will take the final three games all fantastic as well thank you so much for looking around me and i'll catch you again next time hello wbe fans my name is jacob as always first and foremost i just wanted to thank my co-host dr slacking for starting off this episode and starting off this weekly recap thank you so much you did a great job and secondly i want to do apologize to you guys for not partaking in last week's um, shield recap. I was just really, really busy with real life and I was not able to make it. So thank you so much for Dr. Slacking and thank you guys so much for the feedback last week. It's been an incredible season. This is week number 13. So the first game I'm going to be partaking in and talking about is the Uzi Gunner taking on its Gator uh, and the Florida Gators. So first and foremost, I want to congratulate Uxi or Uxi. He brought Uxi. Uh, Uzi for winning and making playoffs, regardless of the outcome of this game. Um, I don't know if he realized this, but he would have made playoffs anyway because uh, he would have been six and seven. Wait, I think so. Or did um, actually no? He would not have been because I think when they were not replacement coaches, Sacred and Game Boy Luke actually faced off. So he had to win actually because yeah. Anyway. Um, first and foremost, Uzi did defeat Gator. I believe it was 3-0 uh, with Rhyperior, Uxi, and Amoongus all living. Uh, Gator brought an offensive team. It's a Gator team. Uh, as he's brought most season, he just brings unorthodox things and brings fun stuff. He brought a really bulky Mega Heracrest that lived a Spex Moonblast from a modest Tapu Fini. That's some pretty wild stuff, if I do say so myself, and then just beat it with a Bullet Seed because he can't miss, but... That was really cool, but Uzi brought a really good team. Um, he made uh, an bet. He uh, he said it during his commentary. He didn't make a very optimal play, uh, letting his Mega Aerodactyl go down to a down fan. But he he didn't expect uh, Rocky MZ or Continental Cross from Stone Edge, which I don't blame him. 
Um, I don't think Gator brought his best team because he probably sees this as, hey, this is a potential playoff rematch. And I believe they actually face off in round one of playoffs, back-to-back -back weeks. So that's kind of interesting. Typically what happens, and now Uzi's a really good player, so I don't know. It's, it's going to be a different game anyway. But uh, typically what happens, it's just like the NFL. Um, if you face off in the last round, week of the regular season, you might lose in the first round of playoffs. Um, so basically, a, an example of this is the Green Bay Packers, Packers beating the Arizona Cardinals in 2009. I believe they won like 33-7 to 7 or something in Week 17. But then they lost in the shootout in the wild card round that year. And me being a Packer fan, I wasn't too happy about that. So anyway, um, football references aside, let's hope this goes well for Uzi and even Gator. Like, it should be a very fun game. I think that's who's facing off. Don't quote me if I'm wrong. Do not quote me, please. But... Anyway, Uzi brought a lot of good stuff. Like, he just brought a team that has defensive pivots, has, t like, tons of Ia Papa Berries and, like, Super Berries. It's weird because, like, I understand why they're good, but I'm not particularly fond of them, and I only bring them if I really need to. Um, but, yeah, um, I don't know. He just brought a really good team, and Gator brought Gator team. So that's it for that game i guess um don't really have much to say um it'll be it's a playoff preview i think so even if they don't face first round of playoffs they could face the second or final round or second or third round of playoffs so um that's that game so let's transition to the next game all right ladies and gentlemen uh the next game we're gonna cover is mewtwo fan nate taking on old man tub the new york noibats taking on the pittsburgh Paratitas, and boy was this game fun it was just a fun game to watch obviously both teams were out of contention for playoffs but it was still a really fun game they were just sitting in call with a bunch of friends like <clears throat> under the radar six foot hacks old man Tup and nate obviously i think monotuli was there dietite aka jason shout out to the goondocks um but it was just a really fun game um uh, Tup basically just brought random mons from his PC that he brought throughout the season, and uh, Nate brought a beam team with like that was built around Echoed Voice spam with Sylveon and Swallow, along with just standard stuff. And he was supposed to be a Totemized Mega Steelix, but uh, he did not gen that correctly. But nonetheless, the Rain Dance Goga was the true hero that we don't deserve. So it was just a fun, fun game to watch. Uh, more of a memeish game, but you know. Those are still fun games, especially later in the season. Everyone's just lighthearted, telling jokes. The banter between everyone is great. And just reminds me of a lot of fun times that I have with my friends in the online community. So, uh, shout-outs to y'all, you good boys there. There's not much to be said about this game, to be honest. But it's a game that I watched and I commentated on and I uh, watched a lot of stuff. So, um, there you go. There's not much to be said about this game. All right, ladies and gentlemen. WB fans, this is the last game that we're going to be covering uh, for the regular season of season number three of the WB, where we're taking, where we're going to be talking about Jordan and his Seattle Sea Kings taking on Cybertron VGC and his Melbourne Rotoms. Well, it was actually a standard game. I watched the entire game. It was just a normal playthrough game. There wasn't any memes. There wasn't any crazy text. There were no playoffs on the line. Uh, it was just a fun, good game to watch. Uh, very back and forth. Uh, Jodor had their early momentum with his Bisharp um, <clears throat> knocking off the Agua Berry, aka one of the Super Berries from Rotom Heat, on Cybertron's side because Cybertron expected them to switch out probably into a mod that... He, <laughs> he didn't have a switch into Rotom Heat on his team, so... <laughs> He, I don't blame uh, Jodor for just going for the knockoff play, just removing the item because it wasn't a very bulky Rotom Heat or something like that. It definitely <clears throat> would have knocked it out or had a chance to knock it out depending on the investment. Um, I didn't see the investment on either side so because I don't think Aaron uploaded it and, or at least at the time of this recording. And then Jodor um, did not reveal his EVs or anything that I'm aware of. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, I will cut that out. Um, I heard a loud slam or something like that in my apartment, so no idea what that was about. Because uh, I went out into the um, by the door where you come in. And anyway, back to the game. It was just a back and forth game. I think Aaron might have brought Specs to Selgor. I'm not too sure. I. Um, based on the damage to like Mega Venusaur, it seemed like it, because Mega Venusaur is really bulky. Um, but yeah, it was just a standard game, back and forth. Um, 
Aaron got the momentum um, earlier when he uh, brought in Cartana and killed the Bisharp. Um, hindsight's 2020 20 for Jordan's part. Um, you know, he could have. He had switch ins to Cartana and Mega Venusaur, so he didn't have to let Bisharp die. I guess Aaron probably just played pretty safely um, because he over predicted on the Bisharp really early with Rotom Heat uh, instead of hard switching out potentially. Um, so maybe he just didn't want to make a, another read. Uh, Joder mentioned that he expected Aaron to overpredict a little bit. But, I mean, like Joder kept saying throughout the entire series, both teams were eliminated uh, essentially from playoff contention. Uh, Aaron was eliminated last week um, because uh, he lost. If he would have won the last two games along with an Uzi Gunner loss, he potentially would have been able to make it in. However, that wasn't the case. Uh, late game, though, Aaron just ended up winning with his... A Selger beating down his team and then um, coming in with Cartana and just cleaning the game. Um, that's how the last game of the regular season for the Shield Division is going to end. Um, but yeah, uh, there you go. There you have it. Um, uh, Jodor ends up winning the game. Or sorry, Jodor ends up losing the game, I believe, 3 0 to Cybertron. And I hopefully we will see both coaches in next season of the WB, which I would imagine will be sort of the first season of Sword and Shield. Um, I'm looking forward to the playoffs matches next week, which I did just double check. The playoffs matches for the sh uh, Shield Division are as followed. It is the Durham Dredagons coached by Six Foot Hacks, aka Leo, taking on Galactic Elliot um, uh, and his Chicago Cub Shoes. It is the Maryland Tor Terrapins coached by Under the Radar taking on the Sin City Sitters. Scissors, coached by Patty Trails. It's the Florida Gators facing Bullet Punch Club. Like I stated before, I was correct. Um, and I'll just go over the other ones really quick, too. Uh, the Minnesota Vikavolts, coached by A-Drive, is taking on the Newcastle Needle Kings. I cannot remember what Pokemon that name was. our team was named after, coached by Patters. Uh, then it is the New Orleans Pelippers, uh, coached by... Jo uh, John Pokemon, obviously, taking on the South Texas Sableyes, coached by In Vivid Color. And last but not least, we have Wolf Blake and his Milwaukee Bewares taking on the Pittsburgh Pichus, take our coach by Num Nexus. So thank you guys so much for what this season of the WBE. It's been a lot of fun. And I know Dr. Slacking probably stated that in his side of the video. He had a lot of fun as well. But stay tuned for next week. Thanks for watching, everyone. Have a great day. And I love you all. Peace.